Hello. I love new sawhorses. It's like Christmas time. Um, this is a style of sawhorses. My intent was to do three videos with three different styles, so hopefully I'll get to the two other styles that I want to show you. This is the style I've used all my life. Uh, they don't look like a lot, but they have worked for me all my life, and I, the, the ones I've personally been making for 28 years, so I know they work. Uh, they, they always get the job done. They last. If they're not stored in horrendous conditions or straight, you know, straight up outdoors all the time in the rain and the sun and snow and everything, they will last a good, a good long time. And then for you around your house, with just you using them, they could last decades. You could get one or two decades out of these easy. They're not the strongest horse made. There's uh, certainly heavier duty designs. Um, you should be able to support easily 500 pounds on these. Uh, any kind of carpentry, you could use them for staging to stand on with uh, planks. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with these. Now, I purposely made these pretty compact. They're only 32 long, and they're 24 tall. So, in uh, metric, that is... Uh, about 810, they're 32 inches. So what is that? 81 centimeters, 81 and a half centimeters almost. Uh, Height-wise, I think they were 24 inches, so that's uh, 610. And uh, they have bracing. They're very lightweight. This half-inch plywood, typical American two by lumber, which is inch and a half. I use two two by sixes. Uh, I had more, I had two 12-footers, but you can do these horses with two pieces of lumber, two 2 by 6s eight feet long, and some scraps of plywood, and you've got your horses at 32 inches. And 32 isn't bad, it's, you could do bigger and all that, but, you know, a sheet of plywood is 48, 32 gives you pretty near the edge. In fact, I don't really like horses that go all the way out to the edge of a sheet of plywood because I run my saw guide. And they tend to get in the way. So uh, I like 32 to 40 on sawhorse length. Uh, 36 would have been maybe my preference. So you might want to upsize these if you buy two 10 footers. You could do that. Um, you may want to change the height based on the way you work and how tall you are. Uh, I specifically made these for hand sawing. They were made with five tools that you see here. Six if you count the uh, knife to sharpen my pencil. So, counting the knife, one, two, three, four, five, six tools. Tape measure, speed square, hand saw, eight point hand saw. I did break out a uh, hand plane to break, knock off some of these hard edges, and the battery drill. So, uh, stay tuned, I'll show you how I made, made one. First video, I'm going to show you one of the most popular saw horses around <clears throat> in America there's probably a hundred or worldwide there's probably a hundred good ones you could pick. The one I'm going to build is the one I've used all my life and I know that it's very easy, very strong and very effective and uh, the main thing is it's easy, it's very streamlined, doesn't take much lumber. So I'm going to try to make it uh, hard because I picture a guy who doesn't have a bench, he doesn't have a picnic table, he doesn't have a work made or or anything so he's trying to get going and that's why he needs saw horses he needs saw horses to make the bench and other things so you know I'm assuming that he if he's going to use a circular saw I'm assuming he can get another person to kind of hold the wood a little bit and I'm assuming he can get some buckets so I'm going to take the camera off and show you the layout of the legs and then I'll come back I'm assuming that a guy can get a couple of buckets you know you can make cuts on a circular saw you step on the you step on it and you can make cuts hanging the piece off and you know you, you make it work but you need to think about your safety if the moment you start up a power tool but I'm gonna try to do this with six tools and I don't even need all those I have a speed square out and the angles I'm working with are 15 degrees that's the slant of the legs so I've set an angle 
on the speed square with a stair gauge. So I guess that's the seventh tool. If you don't have a set of those, don't worry about it. Just eyeball it really accurate on the 15 degrees when you do all your angles. That's the splay of the legs. But I put a stair gauge on there so that I can repeat this over and over. I can flip it over and um, makes it easy. So if you count that, we have seven tools. So you have one, two, tape measures three, combo squares four. We don't really need that, but I've got it out. So we may not use that. The bevel, we probably don't really need, but I've got it out and I've set it to the 15 degrees. That same, that same angle. So I doubt if we'll use this, to be honest with you. So in reality, we may only be using, if you count the stair gauge, one, two, three, I have a drill, a battery drill out is four, and a hand saw is five. So five tools, and we'll make saw horses. The layout of the leg is, I don't know if you can see this. Here's a straight line that's 24 inches. I've got American two by six, which is five and a half wide by inch and a half thick. So this is 24 inches or 610 to here. I'm gonna rip that. So no, these aren't the heaviest duty sawhorses uh, around, but around your house with just you using them, you'll do fine. And they'll probably support 500 pounds easy. At the ends, I've done the angle, 15 degrees, opposing mirror image. Down here, I have the 15 degrees. Wherever they intersect, by the way, is the middle of the board. And I marked that middle. I did use the combo square for that, so I guess I've already used it. I set it up off the edge and ran a pencil against it. You could do that with your tape measure and a pencil. Now, off of here, off of this angle, I've come down four inches. So we're gonna use a two by six full height as the rail and I want it to stick up above an inch and a half. I've left a little mouth here of five eighths of an inch. So come down four and wherever that five eighths hits, you've come down four and you're 90 degrees to that angled cut. This doesn't matter all that much, but it helps you because if you establish that angle good and saw it accurately, you can square down here and you want to square down here such that when you're four inches down, you're five eighths off the corner. That way it'll have a little shelf there for the piece that is our rail. I'm gonna shut down and make these cuts and uh, start up again later. Sometimes lumber will want to bind on you, 
get a scrap or something and slip in between there. This is the lumber wanting to bind. It's releasing moisture and moving so put something in the saw curve like that. It's good exercise. I've got to 24 so I can saw on through and then I'm going to go on and make more legs so it doesn't even hurt to overcut. Okay, there's our rip. I'm going to go ahead and cut the angles right as they are. If I do it well, that becomes the bottom of the next leg. Lumber's binding. Like how you start, restart your saw. Get yourself started good. Now I'll set up on the one I marked out, cut that out, and use it for a pattern on all eight legs or seven more legs. Sir. Good as I can make with a handsaw and uh, makes this usable as a pattern now. You can put it on here, work it. Flip it over, mark it, use your edge, line up your factory edges. the uh, cut line, line up the edge, here's the rip line, probably should have done it this way, like so, just keep on trucking, make all the cuts, I'll get these four legs cut out. two more tools to the mix. I decided that I like to sharpen my pencil. So got a utility knife and you could use a block plane but in my tool list the first thing you acquire is a jack plane. So I brought the jack plane out and knock off all these corners really about all I want it for. I don't care about doing anything to this really. You could clean these edges up if you wanted to. I don't really tend to do that. I want to hit the corners. And these corners. They break off on concrete surfaces and hard surfaces, you might break them off anyway. Better to knock them off. That's really about all I wanted it for. If you wanted to go on and do these, it's hard to hold in this scenario.
clean those up if you you wanted to, but just a sawhorse, not a piano. Okay, I've got I had a 12 foot 2x6 when I started. I have 98 inches left, so I haven't even used four feet. It's because of the legs. Cutting the angles and sharing that angle, making a good cut, enabled me to creep downhill a little bit and get all the use of my lumber. So a 12 and a 4, you could do it, which is uh, one 16 foot 2 by 6. A lot of people can't carry a 16 footer, so could you do two eights? And you could, I think. Um, just take each eight and make a sawhorse out of an eight foot two by six. One eight foot two by six will make a sawhorse. You do need some scraps of plywood, which I'll show you. I'm gonna come back with a finished sawhorse, but I keep finding steps I want to show you. Um, back to this issue of how much lumber you need. I started with a 12 foot two by six. I've already cut four legs. It takes 47 inches to do that. I've laid out the next four legs for the second horse. That leaves more than enough rail left over for the top rail and some bracing. So if you go back to <coughs> fitting, being able to fit two eight-footers in your car, then you could cut the legs, all eight legs, out of an eight-foot two-by-six, and the other eight-foot two-by-six, you can cut a 32-inch rail for each horse, and you have um, about 16 or 17 inches left over for each horse for braces, which I'll show you later. Because you'll have, uh, you should have 40, um, at 48 and a 32, you'll have a 16 inch leftover piece from each rail. Because I figured uh, an eight footer would do both rails. So that's 48 inches each. But make the rail 32 that leaves a 16 inch off fall and I'll show you we'll use that for a brace. Bucket's not a very good height for sawing. Bucket's only about 15 or 16 inches. You can see how that's a struggle. I could put my foot on it and maybe do it, but it's a struggle. That's why these horses are a little taller. The horses will end up about 22 to 24 inches. They're at a 15 degree angle, so they won't quite be 24 tall, but then again, the rail is gonna stick up, so they'll be real close to two foot. Two foot puts you up somewhere where you can really handsaw nice. If you don't want to handsaw, and you know you're never going to handsaw, and you want to build them taller, and that changes everything, um, I think you'd want to go 32 to 36, unless you're like an NBA player or something, you may want to be taller. So, you know, a power saw is up in here. There's no reason to be real low. Um, Sometimes I like being down a little bit for plywood, but even then, I wouldn't go any lower than 32 if you're always going to be power sawing. I'm assuming some of you that would even bother watching me like hand tools and you're thinking about hand sawing, and that's why you want to be down in that 20 to 24 inch range. Okay, after you've cut the rails to 32, come in one inch just to give it a little overhang the tongue on a combo square is one inch, always, unless it's the little six inch. Then come down an inch and a half. That'll be the top of our leg. Then on the other side, inch and a half, that's the top of the leg on each side. I'm just taking a leg and putting it against that mark 
marking the other side just so I get them all where they go. Remember, goes. Standard carpentry trick is cover the X. Marking these so I don't have any confusion when I put them on, but also if you want to pre drill, it tells you where to drill. I'll show you what I mean by pre-drilling. I've got a bunch of two and a half screws, so I'm going to use them up, but you probably want threes. I put a, about a 3 16 bit in there, so we don't have to fight the screws. On one set of legs, you can drill right through the center of the mark. You might even want to go on slight opposing angles. Just a, a little bit, but you don't have to. So these holes here will attach the first set of legs. On the other side, since the leg's in the way, we'll go beside it and angle them in like this. reasons I left an inch is you want a third screw you can do one from that side as well and have three hitting that leg three inch screws would be the right screw I just happen to have a bunch of two and a half so I'm gonna use them up I'll put the bit in the drill now now you have to remember to put your first set on the side that we drilled outside that should be on the bottom because then we'd be Defeating the purpose of it. This little ledge wants to butt up tight. Just hold it. You can kind of see where you're at because of your line. When I'm driving big screws. Really, I like to set the drill speed on the slowest speed. You could take a square and line it up, or Put it up in the air. Follow your layout lines. You want to be square if you can. Drop my bit, of course. Anyhow, run that in. that then these screws will run from this side into that other leg like so you can see what you're doing line up for square your lumber's reasonably straight that helps twisted lumber is bad on legs bad on anything Kind of see what your line is like. Looks pretty decent. These two. Whenever you're using a battery drill. Job one is to get your charger. Make sure your other battery is in fact charged. If it's not, get it charging. First thing before you ever do anything, have your drill charging. You can see the other holes that I drilled from the other side. They hit, they need to hit in this space where this leg goes. Make sure your 
seeded down in your little bird's mouth there. Of course, if you were on a flat concrete floor, this whole thing might be easier, but purposely trying to make it hard. I'm going to show you the other thing you need for these sawhorses is a piece of scrap plywood. And uh, it doesn't take very much, but you know, if you have to buy it, buy a small handy panel and it's two foot by four foot and pick out something other than MDF, which is horrible in the rain. Anyhow, um, what you're looking to do is you know, come up out of the ground a little bit, but come down, you know, maybe halfway and put a piece of plywood in here. So, um, your piece has to be able to to work, and it's nice if you can get one cut out of it and then share that cut on the other side, and you, and you make uh, best use of your material. So, I'll lay this out and show you uh, cutting it pretty easy with a good handsaw, although it splinters bad, so sometimes you want to score the back to uh, get a cleaner cut. Often plywood will bind, you just got to lean flatter until you free of it. It's usually the piece is bouncing and pinching on your blade. Another trick is don't saw so deep and you won't bind quite as bad in plywood. that. Make sure we're good there. We'll cut this piece. We'll use this line for our next piece. It didn't quite work on that other piece, so I'm using my scrap off fall, just tracing this one. It didn't, didn't, quite, didn't quite fit on that other, other scrap I had. Usually I try to use the same angle, but you're using up scraps, you don't always have it. It would have it would have been close. It's it's only nipped off right there, but it's uh, not needed because I have this other material here. So I'll cut this out and show you how I put them on. Okay, I've got the two pieces here. Um, another use for the plane is where the plywood splinters, and sometimes it does. You can take the plane and. Clean those edges up. Like this. Just cleaning them up. So it looks like somebody cared. Like that. Sometimes they show, sometimes they don't. I'm going to pull this up tight. See how we hit our angle, and get some screws in. See that we're pulled up tight to here. Weight goes down through here, transfers onto this, and then spreads out on the legs. It's better if you zigzag screws stronger and it doesn't split the wood beneath. Potentially split it. Longer screws would split it. Over here. I'd set it up like this. Trying not to push on it and get it out of square here until we get the brace on. Don't 
got my feet holding the sawhorse feet. That's pretty stout. I'll do the other side and then I'll set up and I'll show you the braces. Okay, here's what I was saying. You have a off fall in the lumber of about 16 inches. So it's going to get ripped. And those pieces are going to have 45s, opposing 45s. So I've laid that out on this piece here. This is about 16. Rip it down the middle. Each piece would have 45 degree angles. That becomes the brace up underneath here. We'll put the braces in and we'll be done pretty much. Each brace is cut like this. On one end I pre-drilled a hole. That's so it can sit down in here. They're cut at 45 degree angles. A pair of 45s, so nothing fancy. Get the screw started. It's not that much pressure on these, but they certainly do prevent the thing from racking. Um, I'm going to use the longer screws in the end. You do want to remember, if you screw here too high, you'll poke out over here. So you want to be low enough, we'll go on a little angle. So I'll get the low one first. You might want to check your length based on your plywood. I went 16. It could have been a hair shorter. There's a little bit of a tip there. It doesn't hurt anything. Run this one downhill into the meat of the wood. Same thing on the other end. Okay. So there's a needed sawhorse. These are crazy strong for what they are. Everything has limitations to it. They're extremely economical or efficiently made. You know, two pieces of lumber, eight feet long. Um, you could do the legs in two by four and skip the ripping. For a hand tool guy, I would definitely do that and buy a little more lumber and just not rip these. Just do your angle cuts, cross cuts, so you have no ripping in the deal. Plywood is nothing to rip, so hand tool guy uh, may want to go two by four legs here. You can do a two by four here. I'd rather see you do a two by six for strength and uh, saw cutting, you know, over cutting with a circular saw or something, you may hit these. Um, Obviously, height is a big thing, so you want to think about how you're going to use these. If you're doing hand sawing, you need them low enough to saw comfortably and high enough to saw comfortably. If you're doing power hand sawing, you're going to want them up about 32 minimum, probably. For all, all your sawing is up in here. So, um, yeah, they're not perfect. And, wasn't made under perfect conditions, but uh, this is a good horse. I can vouch for it. I've used it 28 years. I know uh, when I started out, guys were building all sorts of different things and just chewing up lumber, using them. You know, they'd use four times the lumber, and it wasn't any stronger. It didn't last any longer, and the joinery wasn't any better. So uh, more isn't always more. Sometimes more is just more. It isn't better. Sometimes it's just more expensive. Actually, sometimes less is more. You do want to pick the lumber good. Pick out, if you're going to buy some 8-footers, eight 8s eight aren't usually as good as 16s. 
because of the kind of tree they came from or what's left from that tree. So pick out really good eight footers, real straight and clean and pretty ones. Least knots you can, you'll like them better. Um, buy an extra, something warps in the sun or something is always a good idea. Um, but I'll make some other styles and uh, I'll, make a, I'll make another style that I've used and I, I know it's a good, a good horse. It's a plywood style. Uh, I'll be making that down the road. And then a third style I want to make is not one that I have used all my life, but it's one I'm impressed with. I like the tr tradition of it and the joinery of it, and I know it's probably a great sawhorse. So, again, a very lightweight sawhorse. These are pretty lightweight. You, know, you can pick these up and go a pair of them real fast. and They're, they're just good horses, but I purposely made these low for hand tool work. And uh, thanks for watching.